they got that guy Jeremiah and they questioning people at the cookie shop because at a all nine suspects, Memphis is such a small town and such a small city. And you know how small towns and small cities go. Everybody know each other, right? So it happened to be that one of the suspects, Jeremiah, got a connection with somebody in the cookie shop. And out of the people in the cookie shop, it's innocent workers and stuff like that management. But one of them people got one foot in and one foot out. And that's Raven, you got to understand, he could have been one of the people running out the back door. You never know. But also, they said it was more than one person in there with Maurice. Maurice knows that Makita's, they shut down that one in Memphis, but the one downtown, that one is still in Dolph's name. Yep. And out of them, all them people, a couple of them were abetting, but that means the rest were in the store with Maurice and them. <laughs> and Raven said that she manages rappers and that she want to be part of CMG, which puts her tied out of her own mouth as having one foot in the street. And then the fact that the Jeremiah dude got a connection with her is that he could be uh, somebody that CMG was sending to be with Raven or that Raven was trying to get him signed to CMG. Whatever their connection is, they're going to figure it out because it happened to be that the last 48 hours before the whole incident, they were talking, somebody from the cookie shop was talking to somebody that ended up being one of the suspects. And that's why they bring it up and asking Raven or someone else allegedly to come back in for another interrogation. But this time they're going to be saying, why do you know Jeremiah in that? How does he know to show up at the cookie shop right when y'all opened? And then moments later, it's a it's a thing with Dolph. So somebody had to tell him to come because they know each other. And so that only leaves it down to two or three people, which one of them is definitely Raven, maybe Maurice, or the brother. Yep. And then you know that Raven, she is the person who's in charge of all of the rappers. She was trying to get 901 Trigger Trey signed. So straight drop, she wanted him signed to... CMG, it did like he got signed, but 901 Trick or Trade didn't. She got mad. She was mad for the simple fact that he was even trying to even get with PRE at first and then tried to come with CMG. So, exactly. And then when she got mad, that's when she changed the story and said that it was somebody else that said to stay with me, Dolph. But if you go back and ask her and say, if that's your dad voice that you said at first, and we asked you, you you know your dad voice, right? And they say, yeah. And she says, so how much, how often you talk to him? You talk to him every day? She's like, yeah, I talk to him every day. So then you would know that that's for sure your dad voice. That's Maurice's voice. And she, yup, okay. But then when she gets mad, a month later, she turned around and say that it's somebody else in the background voice. So why, how could she swear that that's his voice and then she would know who it would be? She knows the difference between Maurice's voice and somebody else's voice for sure. But then a month later, she say it's someone else. Is she trying to hide the fact that Maurice was the one there with Dolph when everything happened? Like, he said that he didn't see anything. He said he just got there. But he was there, standing outside with the news reporters. When it all what happened, he was inside. He took the order because his daughter, Makita, Raven said it. She said that he, her father took the order. And she said when she... <clears throat> she said when her father took the order, he came back and said, yeah, 
stay with me, stay with me. Like, if you put two and two together, you know that Maurice was there. So how come he doesn't know who was with Dolph? Exactly. He was there the whole time. So that means the reason she changed up is because they're trying to hide the fact Maurice was there the whole time. And if he took the order and he answered the phone, then it puts him there. And if 007 saw his car, <clears throat> saw his car parked in front of the store, then moved it after the pops went off, then he was there. And then look where he walks from when he, when he jumped out and the boys pull up. He's walking from the back door towards the front. So how could he have walked towards the front in the store if he's coming out the back? He means he was there the whole time. And he was trying to say he wasn't there, but he was. And Raven proved it through that slip up. But the whole time, they trying to botch the camera footage so we never see him walk in. And be there before the store was open with the car parked the way it was. And when he had a group of people that came with him. Everybody, everybody that has been involved in this, they know for a fact that things that is going on now is a connection to Makita's Raven. Everything leads back to Raven, CMG. Exactly, and she that's why she went off to Dallas, but Dallas is filled with CMG people. And so it makes sense, and 901 came with her because he knows that he was trying to get out that jam in case he get questions. But he told on everybody because they caught his car first, that Ford truck. They found it on the highway. And then the, and the fact that he parked it in that same driveway, they showed up to that driveway looking for him to sit in that chair. And he's supposed to be out there smoking and, uh, and and just waiting. But you know how people just sit, they just stand outside like on the porch or just chilling and kicking it. The boys pulled up to him and somebody said that their car was already gone and that they took it before the Dolph day. And so they, they tried a lot. But then when they found that on the uh, highway, they said that, the engine was still looked like it would have ran within the last 12 hours. And so that's how they ended up towing it. Brought straight up, uh, brought 901 in. And he towed on straight drop. And that's how straight drop and them got caught. And so they went to Dallas while they was getting straight drop and them. And basically. It was a domino effect. You do you know when it, there's a domino effect, that means that everyone that was involved in it started making careless mistakes, which leads them to getting caught. They haven't covered their tracks and the things that they're doing, they're, they're, they're moving wrong. If they were moving any other type of way, they would be like out of harm's way. There's no way that they are still like even going around Memphis, like with CMG, a lot of people can't don't know that, and that's why Yo Gotti artist got hit too, cause Snooty looked like the guy that he had the dreads. He looked like the guy that ran out the back, cause he has dreads. So somebody could have been like Gotti sent him, but you know it could have been just like how the comedian was, where he made the wrong joke and got popped for that. You really never know why people get popped, but that's why you got to stay out of the street life and go get a bag and stop worrying about trying to go sign to a, group, a street group. It's not worth it. Like, you know, basically, if anybody learned a lesson is don't trust anybody so you don't end up like what happened to the other folks. But make sure you subscribe to the channel, though, and come back for tomorrow. I got a breaking news video and I, and I'm gonna be I'm about to go talk to somebody in Memphis that knows everybody, and they're gonna tell me exactly what happened to this the next guy.